What's going on, everybody? Dogman Dan, here we are in Warframe. Um, the Silver Grove update is out on PC. And there's Titania. There you go. Okay, we got a lot of stuff to cover in here. We're going to try to kind of do it more like a live, kind of just kind of go through everything. So just bear with me. Um, first off, just a couple things. As always, full disclosure media and fan channels that are part of the Day One Access have been given the Titania. Um, We've also been giving the new Epoxy Sindana, the Operator Outfits, the Sarpa, and the Pox uh, weapons as well. And we're going to just kind of go over all those things right here in a minute. Uh, and of course, obviously it's the weekend, lots of time to play, lots of time to showcase some stuff, give you thoughts and impressions. But first off, let's start with Titania. Uh, you are going to have to wait a little bit for me to give you the quest and get that all together. But, I want to tell you how to get it. So you're going to come over to the relay, and you're going to go all the way down to the new loca area. And I come into new loca, and this is where you get the actual quest, okay? You actually can pick up the quest, the Silver Grove, just by clicking here. Do you know of the Silver Grove? Earth's oldest and most pure forest it is home to our most sacred shrine. We've learned that the Grenier, those twisted abominations, have planned to build a factory on it. Grenier Scorch units have been deployed, intent on turning our blessed Silver Grove to ash. Generations ago, we recovered an apothic recipe at the shrine. We believe it will reawaken the forest's legendary defenses. Gather the ingredients, and deliver the Apothic to the heart of the Shrine. You are the only hope for the Silver Grove, and the natural purity it represents. And there is our quest. Okay, so we'll pick this up. Like I said, stay tuned, this will come, of course, add it to my inventory. It's that simple to get the quest, okay? Uh, and so we've got Titania, basically. Um, so obviously I can go through it, but I do want to definitely do the quest like I've done in the past. Um, requirement on the quest is you need to have completed the second dream quest before you're eligible to be able to pick up the Titania quest. Okay, so you must complete the second dream quest in order to get the Titania quest, which I think is perfect the way they're doing that. Um, you have to, you know, it's a progression. You really have to progress through things to get stuff. So. Next up, we've got the new operator suits. We'll take a look at those in a moment. Okay, so basically the new operator suits that are out. Fashion frame at its finest, if you will. Um, I'll get into those. We've got the new pox, which I'll go take a look at that with you guys here in a moment. The infested weapon. Just so you can see what it looks like. It's pretty funky looking. And it is a silent weapon. We have the Epoxy's Sindana. That's just pretty cool looking. It doesn't work very well on Titania, but I mean, it's pretty cool looking. You have the Sarpa, which is the, the new gun blade, if you will, uh, that I'm definitely looking forward to in terms of melee. That thing just looks beastly. Beastly. So we'll see how that plays out here in a second. And of course, you got the glyphs. The glyphs are now in here now for uh, anyone that hasn't looked at some of the glyphs. And that's just the ones that all the DE has made. So you come in here and you go to your profile where you see the glyph is added into your profile section. So you can come over here to glyphs. You can see all the glyphs that are available. Okay. Uh, including the ones that you have, your profile icons are now glyphs as well. So you can spray paint those. So you can see all the ones that I have. Of course, I've got the Oberons. All the Oberons. Um, and of course, you know, you buy more, you can get more, right? That's basically how that works. So, they're all there. You can sort through pricing. You can sort through the ones you own, so forth and so on. Okay. Some pretty cool ones. They didn't, doesn't look like they've added any um, of the requested ones from, you know, channels and other media people that they did request from you. So that may be obviously in a further update, if you will. Uh, so we've got the new operator outfits. We saw that. Let's take a quick look here 
like I said, we're going to keep doing this live. Uh, and we'll come over here, take a look at the abilities first. As you can see, we got Spellbind, Tribute, Lantern, Razor Wing. I haven't unlocked anything, I haven't done all that stuff yet, so stay tuned for my full thing on Titania, but I'm pretty excited. Um, appearance wise, you see what you get there. That's just funky. Funky, look, I can make it dance just by. Uh, so we can do a million different things, I would think. Let's see, do we have an alternate helmet? We do have an alternate helmet here. The uh, Titania Rurai helmet, if you will. That's pretty funky looking, right? Nuclear. It's definitely funky looking. I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, in terms of attachment, no, nope. sorry, attachments, Sindana. So we just saw that new Sindana. Uh, that's right here. I mean, it is cool looking, but it just, yeah, I don't like the way that flows right there with her. So we'll try that out on a different frame. Back up, okay, yeah, attachments, yeah, the same thing. You do change the different colors around just so you can get some ideas of colors. Obviously, we'll, I get my color schemes going as per typical. I just have to work them out to see exactly which tint of blue and yellow and gold I'm going to use that I would be happy with because every single frame is slightly different but uh, just some ideas here so you can see what it looks like it's pretty cool let's go back to default for the moment okay so the pox let's take a quick look here the pox unranked has two V slots already on it it's a status weapon and it's 125 toxin damage so it's based toxin damage it's silent status uh, pretty nice fire rate on it okay and this is festering sacks of pus and gas that burst violently uh, on impact basically so there's a lot you could do with this uh, I'm sure we can easily get to 100% status chance or close enough to it uh, and then our toxin damage that we can make into many many different things so we've got that the SARPA which Currently, high noon is the one stance here. I'm having problems with my little mouse lately. Okay, your high noon stance. However, I know there is a new melee stance, the bullet dance, um, that you can go into the void and find the stance and caches that are in the sabotage missions. So I assume that that new stance, bullet dance, goes with this new rep weapon. That would be my assumption. It may not, but that would be my assumption at this point. I haven't gone through everything to find it all out. You can obviously leave comments if you'd like. Uh, sweeping cuts punctuated by bursts of heavy gunfire. Uh, we've got heavy slash damage here. Uh, looks like a 5% critical chance. I don't know how that's going to work out. It all depends upon how things are, but it's definitely a heavy critical uh, seems like a low status chance, seems like a low critical, but you know what? Anything is possible depending upon how you mod it and set it up. D slot, the famous D slot that everybody loves so much, is in here. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, I'll get through modding all these and trying them out. We'll have separate videos on each of these to kind of see what they look like. Uh, upgrading of Titania. V slot. D slot and a V slot here uh, is what we get. So, since our aura is a V slot, I will probably for now go with the typical. Where are you? Typical? Typical? Uh, nope, I won't go with that. Where is it? Where is it? I don't want Dead Eye. No, not Dead Eye. Do, 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 do. Sorry. Uh, we can go Steel Charge. Yeah, steel charge. All right, that's the way to go. Okay, so we looked at the glyphs. We've looked at these couple of new things here. Next up, let's go over to fusion, the endo stuff. So the first part of the fusion system is here. Hadn't really talked about this uh, when they released it the other day. The information. 
it's pretty simple. So they're taking your fusion cores. Your fusion cores are gone on your login, and now they're converted into endo. Which, if you look here, I didn't have a lot of fusion cores, but my fusion cores have been converted converted into 44,203 endo um, as a new system. So basically, everything duplicates, mod fusing, all that stuff can be turned into endo. Endo helps, uh, you know, obviously. Um, raise the rank of your stuff and, and everything is done a little bit differently now here's the stuff that, that I find interesting I just wanted to check it out first before I did anything so what I did was uh, I went ahead let me find it let me find it there'd be no way at this point prior to this update that I would be able to max rank um, any of the prime mods that I have uh, in terms of where they currently sit at so in particular where were you? Prime pressure point. I still had it at 120% and I needed three more ranks, okay, to get it to the max. Now, a couple things you can do here. You can fuse it, obviously. You you can sell it. If I sell this mod, it'll sell for 8,500, which is really bad. If I want to dissolve it into endo, I'd get 160 endo out of it by dissolving it. But if I come over here, it's pretty simple, okay, just as it was before. Now we're looking at our endo that we have. And we just have a plus and a minus. So I'm at rank seven, and it goes by rank. There's no more halves or you know partials in here. So you get enough to get to the next rank, and that's it. Okay. So if I click it once, I can see it's going to cost me 5,120 endo plus 247,000 credits. Uh, obviously, it brings me up to 125%. I click it again, 15,000 endo, 741,000 credits. Okay. I can even max rank it now. I have the ability to max rank it to the 165. I would not have been able to do this with my old fusion cores that I did not have that many of. So the conversion rate was phenomenal for me. I can actually max this out 35,000 uh, and 1.7 million. I mean, it's not like I don't have uh, the money. I got the credits right here, 52 million. So I'm good there. So that's pretty cool. I like how that works now. It's really, really definitely simplified uh, in terms of how to mod something. So the same thing, I can come over here, click it, say Prime Morphix Transformer. Okay, there we go. Click it again, click again. So much more simplified just to get to the information that you need and to max mod it. No more, uh, how does this work? How does that work? That type of thing, okay? Uh, we can, whoops, I didn't want to do that. We can also, uh, come over to our duplicates tab right so I've got 12 accelerated how many do I want I'll just I'll s select one right this one will dissolve into 10 endo so that's it I can I can click it yeah dissolve it into endo sure there you go now I have one less and now I've got 10 more endo up here so that's how you take your duplicates move them into endo and endo can obviously be converted into everything else uh, and you can you could do it with as many as you want so uh, I like the way that works if I went over here duplicates of course we have duplicates so I could take all my swift deaths all right let's say I would select all this is gonna take 42 of these would give me 210 extra endo well, I don't need swift death death because I don't really use death cube but it's already max rank so all I'm gonna do is say yeah sure why not boom now I just added another 210 endo real real simple to work with I really like what they did here now that's only phase one of the two phases in terms of the endo ranking system phase two is gonna be a little bit different so basically the conversion just as a base conversion just so you understand is five endo equals one unranked common core if you were to convert it um, more or less part two is going to be something that has to do with treasures where you discover ancient valuables and construct them and convert them into endo and then you'll be able to trade endo in the form of these treasures okay just as FYI we have uh, as well three new augments uh, let me see if I've got access to these augments or not. I haven't even looked yet. 
So it Nyx, Neza, and uh, Atlas. So I'd have to look here. I haven't actually looked at everything yet. Let's see which ones I do have, which ones I don't have. Let's see. So it's not there. Cancel. Back. Maybe under Red Veil. We'll take a quick look. Let me just go with Hide Own there. That'll make life easier for me, right? So Atlas. Okay. Uh, Atlas. This new one here. Landslide. Path of Statues. I've talked about this, I think. Uh, leaves a trail for 12 seconds that petrifies enemies for 6 seconds. Okay, so that's under the Red Veil. Uh, I have a couple here I guess I didn't get yet. but That's one of the new ones. Path of Statues. Definitely one I want to take a look at. Uh, I mean, I've got this stuff too. But that's there. Okay, uh, let me go back. Let me go back. Let's see. Uh, under parent, maybe. Maybe under parent. Let me do hide own. Uh, is it the new chroma? No. Rhino. I've got a few that I obviously don't have. Nope. None of those. None of those. How about under steel meridian? I'm going to have to go to my other profile to go and look for, for the Nyx and the Naza, I think. Uh, Ember, Atlas, uh, Frost, Rhino, Naza. There we go. Warding Halo's safeguard. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. Warding Halo augment now can be cast on allies with 50% effectiveness. I think that's pretty good. Really think that's an awesome one to have. I may have to try to figure out how I'm going to work that into my setup. Uh, obviously when I'm doing a team-based run, more or less. Uh, but I do not have the Nyx one. Oh, wow. I don't have Nyx. Let's come over here to offerings. Let's see. So obviously I'm gonna miss out on Nyx. Okay, um, but her new one is where is it? Here it is. Here's the new one. Assimilate. Uh, can move at a 50% speed while using absorb, but the area is reduced by half. So you're still gonna get your absorb, but you can move now with absorb. That's actually pretty damn good in my opinion. But again, this is, you gotta test them to know. So, until you've tested them, there's not really much you could do about it, right? Uh, Lenaro and Conclave, I don't wanna get into too much here. Okay, and there's new Conclave skins. I'll probably touch base on that in another video. Um, new maps, new warm up system, new game mechanics. Um, new PvP matchmaking rules, all that stuff is kind of something. New penalty reward system, something to get into uh, in terms of other things, Lunaro custom binding. The big thing I want to talk about though is they have a soft launch on player host servers for the PvP Lunaro, uh, which basically means that in short term, um, if you are part of their selection, very limited number of people running this that have been chosen or given the opportunity to do it. Basically, they have a dedicated computer to host this, separate of their own regular computers. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer system. Uh, give you more information as we get more information. Uh, they're just using a soft launch to kind of get some ideas and figure out what's going on uh, with it. And I mean, it would be pretty cool, I think, to see it go down the road where you can get a server and actually host Lenaro off, you know, a server that you can buy for your, your clan or whatever. I think that'd be pretty awesome if that was uh, something that would happen. But uh, who knows? Anyway, I've rambled too much in here. Uh, all the other information will be over on the Nog Community uh, website and the Nog Community forums on this update. In terms of that, right now, changes and fixes and stuff. Uh, stay tuned, I'll definitely get into my thoughts and impressions on the different weapons and on uh, the new Titania as it is over the weekend. Comments, questions below, I'll gladly answer them as soon as I can. And until next time, thanks for tuning in.